Welcome to lesson one of geometry. Lesson one is about describing shapes and looking at the different ways that you can describe shapes. Okay, so um, the first thing that you need to know is what an attribute is. And an attribute is a way of describing a shape. So an example of, a, and an, of an attribute might be explaining that one side of a shape is the same um, length as another side of a shape. And that would be an attribute of the shape, is that two sides are the same length. Okay? So that's the first thing that you need to know is what the word attribute means. The next thing that you need to know is what parallel sides are. And parallel sides means that the two sides, so the two sides of a shape, or two lines are always the same distance apart and they will never ever touch. So that means that um, if my arms are parallel and they're straight, that means that if they continued 100 kilometers up in the air or down into the ground, they would never ever touch each other. Okay, so that would be parallel. Um, if I had two lines like this and then the shape went like here and it connected them, um, this would not be parallel. Because if I extended these lines up, they would touch up here. And they can never ever touch, even if they're extended. So that would mean that they are not parallel. Okay, so parallel just means that they are right next to each other. Just like the um, tracks on a railway track, uh, the, line, the two uh, rails, I guess, the rails that connect the, uh, the wood pieces, uh, the rails would be parallel because they never ever touch. Okay, so that's the second thing. The third thing that you need to know is what hatch marks and arrows are used for. So hatch marks are used for the first thing that we talked about, um, the example of the attributes, and that is to say um, that sides of a shape are the same length. Now you could use one hatch mark, you could use two hatch marks, you could even use three hatch marks, um, but you need to use different amounts uh, depending on how many sides on a shape are the same and how many different lengths there are that are the same. Okay, and uh, so what I mean is, so we have this rectangle here and the left and right sides are the same length, but they are different lengths from the top and bottom. So they get one hatch mark each, showing that they are the same length. Okay, and then the top and bottom, they are also the same length, but different from the left and right sides. So they get two hatch marks each to show that they are the same length, but they are different from the left and right. Okay, so those are hatch marks. They're just little ticks, they look just like this on your paper. And uh, it doesn't really matter if you put two hatch marks on the top and bottom, or if you switch it up and put two on the left and right and one on the top and bottom. Doesn't matter as long as you're showing that they are the same length as, as, as uh, the sides, but different from the other ones. Okay, that's what's important. Um, and then arrows are very, very similar as hatch marks, uh, but arrows show that lines are parallel. Okay, so this means that um, on our trapezoid here, whatever this is, uh, it's not a trapezoid. I can't remember the name right now. Anyways, um, we've got this line here and this line here. It's a parallelogram. That's what it is. Parallelogram. <laughs> My brain works on a holiday. Um, anyways, we've got these two lines here and we've got these two lines here. Oops. And uh, these lines here are parallel. So if we extended them for, for forever up or forever down, they would never ever touch. So they each get one arrow. And then these two lines are also parallel, but they're not parallel with the side ones. So they get two arrows to show that they are parallel, but not parallel with those ones. Okay, so it's a very similar concept, but they are important to include. Because if these marks are not included on the shape, then we cannot assume that those um, sides are parallel. We would have to measure and, and uh, measure angles just to make sure. Okay, so if you are told to draw a shape with parallel sides, then you need to add the arrows. Just like if you're told to draw a shape with um, equal lengths of sides, you need to put the hatch marks. Okay, that's, a, that's an important part of geometry. Now, number four, the fourth thing that you need to know is what a vertex is. And a vertex is when two lines meet. It's at that point right there. That's a vertex, so it's just a corner. And it doesn't have to be a 90 degree angle corner. It could be any, any size of corner. 
okay? And what you need to know about a vertex or vertices, if you have many vertexes, vertices, um, is that they are always labeled with capital letters, never lowercase letters. Because when you get into higher geometry, you use cap or you use lowercase letter letters for something different. So it'll get confusing if you don't get into the habit now of using capital letters for the vertex. Okay, so always corners are capital letters. Sometimes you might be given a shape with the letters already on, and sometimes you might have to label it yourself. Okay, when you label it yourself, you just pick somewhere in the alphabet to start and then continue on with those letters. And yeah, it's, it's uh, as long as each corner, each vertex doesn't have the same num uh, letter as another one, then you're good to go. Okay, so this is an example here. Um, we've got a triangle and we've got an A, a B, and a C. Okay, so I need to, if I need to name this shape, then I say what the shape is. The shape is a triangle. And then I list off the letters. I just pick a point. Usually I pick the first, the alphabetically first letter and then continue on. But um, I would pick, so I pick A because that's the first letter. And then I need to pick a direction and just go around and list them up. So I wrote triangle and then it's triangle A, B, C. So that's the name of this this shape is triangle ABC. We also have sides labeled. Um, this would be side AB, this is side CB, and this is side AC. Okay, so notice that they're labeled based on their ver based on their vertices is the thing that I tried to say. Uh, camera ran out of memory space. Okay, so let's look at the trapezoid. Um, this is called a trapezoid. Uh, we'll look at it further, like I said, when we get into um, quadrilaterals. But, um, so if I'm going to name this shape, I might put the letters L, M, O, and N on there. And then I would write the name of the shape, which is a trapezoid, and then put the letters. Now notice that I did not put the letters in alphabetical order. That means that I cannot put these letters in alphabetical order in um, this shape. Because what I need to do is I need to imagine the lines of this shape as a road. And I cannot go across um, the field in the middle of the road. I just need to follow it. So um, if I am at L, then I need to either go this way or this way and I need to go all the way around. So I might say L-M-O-N or I could say L-N-O-M or I could start at a different vertice. It doesn't really matter. That's not important. What's important is that you list them in order going around one direction and you pick that way. Okay, so I chose L-M-O-N, trapezoid L-M-O-N. Uh, we've got four sides. We've got the little arrows here to show that these two sides are parallel. And um, so yeah, that's the basics of this one that you just need to always label the vertexes or vertices with a capital letter and then name the shape based on what the shape is and what the letters are that you put on in order. Okay, so let's look at some ideas of what you could use to describe shapes using the attributes. Um, so you could describe using the length of the sides or the direction of the sides. These are not the only ways, but these are some of the main ways that you'll be looking at today. Okay, so let, let's look at these examples. So for the length of sides, um, I'm looking at the square here. And I know it's a square because we've got hatch marks on each of the sides, showing that they're all equal, and that means that it's a square. Um, and so an attribute of this square is that all sides are equal. Okay, that's an attribute. Now if we look over here, we've got a rectangle. And since only some sides are equal to each other, so the top and bottom are equal, the left and right are equal to each other, then an attribute could be that some sides are equal. Or we could say, if this was labeled A, B, C, D, we could say that side A, D is equal to side uh, B, C. Okay, so there's some. And then looking at the direction of the sides, um, we could say that a shape has parallel sides, such as this parallelogram right now, or right here. And um, I know that because we've got the two arrows there showing that it's parallel. And, um, or we could say that there are no parallel sides. And that's another attribute of, attribute of a shape. Um, and I know that because there's no arrows on any of the lines. And I can also tell just by looking at it 
then it's obvious that there couldn't be any parallel sides. Okay, so those are some examples of attributes. So let's practice doing attributes. So we're going to do one together and one you're going to do on your own and then I'll show you. Um, but I just pulled these two shapes from the other side of the page um, just to describe because we had not described them yet. So it says write at least three different attributes for each shape below. Uh oh, this used to have an A on it but it has since gone away. So please add an A if that's not on your paper. Um, so let's do triangle ABC together. Um, so then one attribute we could do is that this triangle has three sides. So okay. um, another attribute is that we could say it has three vertices. And one more attribute um, we could do is uh, no sides are parallel. Okay, um, this one's sort of limited because it doesn't have any hatch marks or arrows or anything. Um, I guess probably each one of those probably are equal, but we can't assume that they are because there's no hatch marks. Um, but what you need to do is look at this trapezoid, please, and um, think of three attributes about this trapezoid and try to use, don't just use the exact same thing as this, try to use something different because it's a different shape and it has different attributes. So please pause the video and do that now. Okay, so you should have the attributes complete for this shape. And so let's look at some that you may have got. You could say that uh, sides L, M, and N, O are parallel. You could say that there are four vertices. You could say that there are four sides. You could say that um, side LM is the longest side. Notice how I'm just describing the shape. Um, it's not necessarily a cookie cutter answer. Um, you could have had a variety of answers. Um, if there were hatch marks here and here, you could say that those, this side is parallel to that side uh, by saying side LN is parallel to side MO. Okay, but that wasn't on there, so you couldn't have that. But that's the basics of what you're going to be doing for this assignment. Um, if you need extra help looking in your textbook, there might be some extra examples in there in the beginning step before the assignment. But your assignment is at the bottom of this page and it is on page 224 and 20, 225. And it's number one and then four, five, six, and seven.